All right, so I got a request to do a video about uh, radioluminescence, about these little scintillations, these flashes of light that you can see, for example, in these old radioactive radium watch hands, like is on screen now. But, um, well, I was kind of disappointed because I actually had to turn down that request because, um, well, you can, if you, if you adapt your eyes to the dark and sit there for about five minutes in full darkness and then look at these, these watch hands from ancient radium watches uh, with just a simple magnifying glass, you can actually see these individual scintillations. But a normal camera sensor is not, is not able to see those at all. So, um, yeah. I basically had uh, two options for making this video. First of all, I could have used an image intensifier, also known as night vision, to film this, but uh, I don't really have access to one of these, and they're like $10,000 or something. So um, the other option I had would have been to drastically increase the activity of the material to produce much more uh, of these, these scintillations, of these light flashes, so the camera is actually able to pick them up. But um, the problem is that um, this amount of radioactive material in the form of radium-226 would have been such a significant source of radiation, it would have been a serious radiation hazard as in terms of uh, causing acute radiation sickness. And uh, yeah, that, that's not too much of a good idea, so um, I, I looked around at what else could be done and found I could just use uh, tritium, uh, radioactive hydrogen, which has a very nice, interesting characteristics. So radioactive hydrogen gas, tritium, is a beta-only emitter and it only has a very soft beta radiation that is very easy to shield almost fully with just using a simple glass tube that you need to contain it anyway. So uh, in the watches you'd have radium together with zinc sulfide and uh, zinc sulfide the alpha particles emitted by the radium would actually cause these little flashes of light, these scintillations. Um, but radium is not a pure alpha emitter. It also has a gamma component that is emitted along the way, and a lot of radioactive daughter nucleates that appear after the radium itself decayed, and that makes it, yeah, pretty much of a radiation hazard because it has a lot of radiation and can go a long way through a glass tube, even to a thick piece of lead and everything. So tritium, as I said, on the other hand, only emits very soft beta radiation that is nearly fully shielded by the glass tube. The glass tube itself is covered on the inside with phosphorus, with a layer of phosphorus, where the soft beta rays from tritium will strike and produce these scintillations for us to see. And because the radiation is hardly able to, to penetrate the glass at all, um, in fact the background radiation just on top of the tube is about uh, three times normal background radiation, so totally insignificant despite the very high activity inside. I'll talk more, more about that later. Um, this is a harmless source to use. So let's take a look, shall we? Well, first of all, I'm actually going to have to bother you with something else. This here is just a green LED that I'm going to cover with a piece of paper to cause some more dispersion to mimic what we will be seeing from the tritium in a second. Because what you can see right now are little flashy things, like noisy, grainy things there. And that is just uh, noise from the detector, of course, because it's too dark, so there's too much uh, statistical variation between all the individual pixels. So you can see this kind of detector noise that comes from the camera and has nothing to do with scintillations. Keep in mind how this looks, so you can tell apart the actual tritium scintillations that we'll be able to see. So as you can see here, this uh, source of tritium is emitting so much light uh, due to radioluminescence that even the camera can see the text in this book, and it's much brighter to the human eye. Now, to put it into perspective, as I said, pretty much all of the radiation from the tritium is absorbed within the tube, so the surface radiation on this source is only about three times background radiation, so less than one microsievert per hour. If this was the same amount of radium-226, the stuff that is used in watch hands, the surface radiation would be 800 sievert per hour, and I would receive about 0.4 sievert per hour where I'm handling the camera, so I would be sick with mild radiation sickness after handling it for one hour. Anyway, here's the tritium tube, and you can see me putting just a little magnifying glass in front of the camera, because that seems to work out really well. And uh, I really hope you can see these, these scintillation, these flashes. I can see them very well in the original source video, but I'm not sure what YouTube's compression will do to this. So um, make sure that you watch it in the highest possible quality and in full screen and with a uh, very high brightness on your screen. 
And then I really hope uh, the compression is not gonna fuck this up, so you'll be able to see these beautiful scintillations here. Keep in mind uh, the difference between the camera noise, which is just a st statistical fluctuation of brightness basically, versus these really bright flashes, like lightning flashes, but more round lightning flashes basically in there. Those things are the real scintillations. Of course they are everywhere because, um, well, the entire tube is glowing, but these, these very bright scintillations that you can see are uh, on the surface basically, so on the on the outer part of the phosphorus that is towards the glass, so you'll be able to tell them apart from the deeper scintillations by the brightness. Of course a proper image intensifier would have made this much much better, but I still hope that you were able to see these scintillations and maybe just uh, try this for yourself if you have some radium war chance. But even if you don't, you could uh, check out triboluminescence. Just go to your kitchen, grab uh, two cubes of sugar, just a normal plain sugar that you put in your coffee, uh, sit in the dark, and I mean complete darkness, for at least five minutes, and I don't mean two minutes, but five minutes, and then start smacking the sugar cubes together like you just don't care. And what you'll be able to see if you do it just right, it might only work uh, every, I don't know, 20th time that you do that smacking, you will see blue, little flashes of tribal luminescence. Beautiful.